Good afternoon. I am Peter. I am a ground source geothermal installer and an instructor with Clean Edison. And I'm here to answer this week's question, which is, how do we decide the size of a ground source heat pump and of the loop? And the answer is that there, there are three simple steps. First, we determine the load on our building. We look at how many BTUs or British thermal units are escaping from the house through the walls and insulation and windows. And for our heating dominant climates north of the Mason Dix line, we use ACA Manual J, Air Conditioning Contractors of America Manual J techniques to analyze floor plans on existing buildings. And here at my house, uh, the design is for two degrees in Connecticut. So if we want 70 degrees inside and two degrees outside, a certain number of BTUs will have to travel from the inside to the, to the outside. Um, and we want to add up how many go through the walls and the ceilings and the windows and the insulation to arrive at that total number. So suppose that's 24,000 BTUs per hour leave my house when it's cold. And what I need to do is take my geothermal system that's in the lawn behind me at my home and gather that amount of heat out of it and bring it into the house. So the first step in sizing the heat pump is to get what the heat loss is. How, how big, big a system need depending on how big and how much heat exists through the, um, the house walls. The next thing we do is that we select a heat pump with the capacity to supply that same 24,000 BTUs per hour into the ductwork into our house. And the, the third thing we do is that we design the underground loop, which is behind me on this nice wind, uh, windy October afternoon. We design it. And here I've put almost 800 feet of, of um, uh, tr horizontal trench with uh, geothermal pipe loop and circulating wall water seven feet deep under the lawn behind me. And I've designed my loop as we are all trained to do at the workshops. So we look at the loads then we size the heat pump, and then we size the length and depth of the ground loop. In the workshop, when we're going through the three days of training before we take our NATE test, what we do is we look at different formula and tables, and we learn about important items like the thermal conductivity of the soil and the rock. And we take these factors and we learn how to compute lengths and depths of our outside ground loop that transfers the heat from the ground into the pipe and then into our house. And we also uh, have computer programs now that do this for us, but we have an understanding in the class. We know what's behind them so that we can use the computer programs very efficiently.